Greetings and welcome to Tell It To Someone, the only show where technical difficulties are... Oh, it's not that bad, is it? This question is from Cowdalp. Why is toilet paper square when bottoms aren't? Actually, well, actually, I thought bottoms were square, because... I better stop watching so much cubist pornography. Um, look, actually, toilet paper. I, I saw. It, I've seen it in the, the the shops. It's like it's like this big, and it, it's it's round, and it's got a hole in it. Therefore, it's exactly like a a, a bottom, because it's you know it's round and it's got a hole in it. So your question is irrelevant. Pink Eye Tally asks, uh, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck without the rights for collective bargaining? They'd be on strike, so they, you know, if they don't have the rights for collective bargaining, um, sooner or later they'll, they'll go on strike in order to get the rights for collective bargaining because uh, the boss would have, the boss woodchuck would have been, uh, uh, would, have, would have been cutting and cutting and cutting away their, their per um, log uh, you know, um, pay, and after a while, they would have said, no, enough is enough, we're going to have to uh, get collective bargaining rights. Tazx123 uh, writes, um, Dear Mr. Talented, it's way past my bedtime, why am I still up? It's a problem with your collective bargaining rights. You know, you, you know they, they, they're keeping you up way past your bedtime doing whatever it is you do. I don't know whether you know yourself. Um, but anyway, if, if, if you don't have your collective bargaining rights, you're going to just, you know, they're going to keep you up and keep you up and keep you up. You know, it's not, it's not all that healthy. Uh, Chithanoli no, Chithonius asks, "What would be your favourite thing to grab onto if gravity stop suddenly stopped working?" Well, if gravity's on strike, I'd have to uh, um, grab onto my collective bargaining agreements. Hear that, Wisconsin? Collective bargaining agreements. Good thing. And the masterpiece asks, uh, why did the ninja not protect you in, uh, st from Steven Seagal's stunt double? Um, that was in last week's episode of Tell It Someone. You can see it annotated here. He certainly did not earn a hug. Well, actually the um, ninja um, didn't really need uh, to protect me from Steven Seagal's stunt double. See, Steven Seagal's stunt double is uh, 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 a professionally trained stunt double. Now with professionally trained stunt doubles, um, they're, they're trained to really um, sell the, uh, the, the, um, the punch or whatever they're doing, but not actually touch it. Touch the um, person, um, you know, um, when they're actually hitting them, and then it's dubbed over after, you know, afterwards in editing. So, what I did, see, I'm not a, a, a professionally trained stuntman, so I um, am able to punch him in the face. Now, because he was a professionally trained stuntman who doesn't hit people in the face, it's all dubbed on, he was taken surprised by this, by surprise by this, and I was um, able to beat him up, and I even stole his wig. His other question, if I can remember where I put the paper, is: What does a monkey on steroids sound like? Sounds like this guy. Or this guy. Yeah. 
And that's it for Tell It To Someone for this week. I apologise for all the technical difficulties. It's my fault. I shouldn't have had it plugged in with that power surge and go BOOM! Anyway, uh, your dovetail question is here if I have my new editing programs uh, working now. And um, I'm dangerously talented and I don't have a cool sign off.